heart attack, fast fatal heart impact, past painful scars, in fact I blast tasteful thoughts and past I back up my actions, fact don't ask, grab reactions, jacked attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap, I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise, now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce, I ain't lost, I'm finally loose, pick a new submerged juice, I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used, everybody wants a piece now, y'all can rest in peace now, you're dead to me so peace out, remember you're discreet now, get ready for defeat. Alrighty, hello, hello everybody. This is Kiru Show here, and now, whenever we last left off with this series, quite a lot was happening. In the last part, we had Deku and Amelia. Both of these two, they were abducted by an alien government, and they discovered quite a lot. They're aboard a giant planet-sized station, and they found out that there are alien species out in the universe that they've all gathered together and create a place for themselves. It was very odd. There are thousands of different races here, and these aliens, they were confused to find these two on a prison planet, able to breathe the atmosphere which should have been toxic to them. Now, this was odd for both of these two, and after at least trying to understand many things, they discovered a lot. Basically, here's the gist of it. They discovered they need to be very careful, or at least be aware. Their actions, they can be interpreted differently. A handshake could be an act of war, or it could be a greeting, or it could be a romantic gesture or even a proposal. There's no real way to interpret it for any species. Now, there's also the fact that Deku and Amelia both of them discovered something else very shocking. Hybridization of certain species are possible, and that Surprised both of these two. Deku and Amelia, they didn't think that they could ever have children. However, they found out aboard the station that Amelia was pregnant. And right now, both of them, they're trying to understand this information. Now, we do currently have Deku and Amelia. Both of them, they've been going over things for the last couple days. And right now, it's been confusing. Deku has sent in requests multiple times to get a ship to allow them to get back to Earth. Because of something quite simple. They aren't allowed back to that planet. And will they could stay here? The exact options they have regarding living around the station, it isn't good. Their atmosphere is toxic to many species here. And they would have to wear spacesuits just to walk around the station freely. Even then, this place is cramped and chaotic. Along with that, they'd rather not get mixed up in different understandings, or at least misunderstandings with other species. And they do at least want to bring this information back to Earth. While a transmission would be the best way to do it, there is the fact that Deku, he really wouldn't trust Adam with it. Bring a transmission that says, oh, this, this, and this, and it can be changed around or even hidden in light about. Now, Deku and Amelia... They've been putting in this request for a few days. And Deku, whenever he does wake up today, he actually has to go to look at a terminal. Him at least going to see that the request has been approved. However, both of them, they are going to have to, well, answer a few questions first. Now, the scientists aboard the station, they've done many things. They've literally tried to inspect, reverse engineer, and even copy some of the schematics from the Draytex aircraft. And they found not really a lot. However, they were concerned about it. Apparently, the human can pilot an alien fighter ship. And they wish to know a lot more about this. And Deku, whenever he does actually go walk into the hangar bay, he doesn't look around. This place is huge. And he's looking at different spacecrafts. It's, uh, strange to say the least. There's one that looks like a perfect ball. There's one that's almost completely flat. And there's one that literally looks like spinning circles or spinning, well, wheels inside of each other. How does that thing even move? Now, Deku, he does get to walk over to an area where there's no spacecrafts around a certain perimeter. And right now there are actually shields surrounding the Draytex aircraft. And many people that do watch is Deku just going to walk up. One of the scientists is actually going to turn electrically at Deku. 
asking exactly if he happens to be, well, him saying a name that Deku doesn't understand. Um, listen, your language is different than mine. The translator is still trying to understand your languages and code mine to yours. So just scan this. The person can use a Deku. Until he does this go to hand out his, or at least hold out his wrist, with a band on it, the man is going to see. Him looking back up at Deku before he's going to bring up his hand. And scan the band on his wrist. Before Deku, he actually has to go to walk forwards and through the perimeter. And the man is going to watch Deku. As just ask him if he just so happens to be ready now. Hmm? Yeah, let me just, um... Is there someone else I can talk to? Because you're choppy for me. Now, then we're going to point, the man will go to point at another alien. As Deku does walk over to them, asking if they can understand Japanese. Hmm? Oh, um, hello. Hi. You're a Daverix, right? Yes, I just happen to be one. Why is that? Okay, good. The translators, they work pretty good on your species. And I'm hoping I can actually at least talk to you about this. Hmm? Oh, were you having a problem with him over there? Yeah, I was. Um, my language is pretty strange compared to some of the ones I've heard here. Yes, well that is fair. If I'm correct, his language does sound like a bunch of clicking noises. What? Oh, did not, that not translate? No, it's just... Never mind. I'm just going to write off everything as possible now. So just proceed. Ah, oh, yes, well, um, we've looked at much of this aircraft's capabilities. And we are curious to know a lot about it. So, we wish to see it in action. We wish to see it fly. Really? Yes. Um, my species in particular, we're quite interested to see what this can do. In fact, um, well, we are curious because it does have the same composition as us. It does? Yes, just different metals and, well, from what we understand, covered over a... It's, um... It's... Are you just so happen to be mechanically inclined? Um, we call those mechanics on my planet. Okay. Perfect. Um, well, uh, oh, this explanation is very strange, and I wish to share it. These things, they're, well, um, they're machines completely mimicking certain organic creations and creatures. From what I do understand, and I have seen from this technology, it is perfectly mimicking life. And, from what I can understand, it does seem to, well... Have a form of self-preservation. It will constantly cannibalize technology, incorporate it into itself, and repurpose it. In fact, it's so advanced. It's like a single-cell organism trying to massively repair itself on a large scale. And it just so happens you can manipulate it and create weapons with it. Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of understood all that from the beginning. But my species, we always thought it to be different. We thought it to be like a mechanical nervous system linked up to it. Because, um, well, whenever we did take out the limbs, it did seem to be somewhat organic on the inside. The inside? Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> not really even organic. Uh, you'd have to ask a scientist. That's out of my field. I see. Well, would you fly the aircraft for us? I can, yeah. Now, Deku would go to walk up into the cockpit. A lot of people watching Deku just climb into the aircraft casually, as he does go to bring his hands up and go to close the cockpit, before he does go to just start to take off his suit, after at least going to turn on the machine, and just start to flip into the air. Deku actually taking off the top part of his suit and going to bring his hands into the mechanisms to allow him to fly as he does he start to communicate with somebody on the outside and express to them what's going on. Now, 
Deku would show everybody here exactly how these machines can fight. And even after some things were set up for him to hit or even attack or fight against, there is the fact that many people, they are actually incredibly impressed by the technology. And they do even watch Deku perform the act of cannibalizing the technology. And that is very interesting to them. Well, Dreytech's technology is something that they are, well, very interested in. The fact that they're watching one in perfect condition work, it does also somewhat intrigue them. They do have multiple different fragments of technology. However, they don't have a core system like this Dreytech, with this Dreytech ship does have. If they were able to replicate or even, well, reverse engineer a Dreytech's core, then that can actually help them out immensely. And they can begin the process of making ships exactly like the Dreytech's. However, there's just one problem. The core, it's the strangest thing they've ever tried to make. And tr the act of trying to make one requires a mineral that they have yet to identify. Now, this is actually where Deku, he does come in. The human, well, from what they do understand, he can pilot a ship. And if he can pilot, sh pilot the ship and understand the Dreytech's technology, and he does have information on the Traqua, then he might have an idea as to where to find these mineral deposits. And that is what the council, they're interested in. They want to know where to find these ores. They want to know where to find the materials to make the ships. Because if they can find it, then maybe they can actually start to make a force to fight back. And completely take the Dreytics by surprise. Catch them off guard and sandwich them into the Traqua and take up with enemies. The Dreytics will be forced to advance on the Traqua. And this will actually be very successful for both of them. While the Traqua, they could actually be thrown into extinction because of the Dreytics, the Dreytics they would at least take heavily casualties from both sides, and their numbers could be weakened. However, this also does at least pose another idea. If the fact is they can reverse engineer this technology, they can at least have the access to cannibalization of technology. And the Traqua, or not Tra Traqua, the Dreytics, they wouldn't be able to use that as the main way to sustain their forces. They wouldn't be able to just do Russian gun ho and not worry about dodging or even maneuvering. They wouldn't be able to just fly into ships and rip them apart, and cause mass casualties that way. And they wouldn't be able to grow in numbers and replicate that way anymore. Now, this also does cause some concern, however. The Dreytics, yeah. If they were to go against a very large Dreytix fighter, there is no telling exactly what would happen. There are multiple ways to deal with that. And, well, while those ships are a lot more difficult to encounter, their main concern would be taking one down. Since, well, those things, they aren't exactly tiny. Now, we do currently have Deku, who, as he is flying the ship, he actually does eventually come back into the hangar. And he is talking to a lot of other people. And many of them, they are actually a lot more surprised. They didn't know that those ships could be piloted by other species. And that apparently the only pilot for this one is a human. Now, we do actually wonder Deku is going to step out of the ship, and somebody they do come forwards. And they do want to talk to Deku a bit more about this ship. And exactly what they may be able to do to possibly at least get a bit of a business proposal for him. If they do believe that that's the human term for it. Now, Deku, he's currently sitting there, and he is making sure that his suit does fit somewhat comfortably. Deku going to mess with an armed guard, as he at least does go to make sure his arm on the inside of his suit is okay. Hmm, okay. Alright, I think that's fine. You would just happen to be a human, correct? Hmm? Oh. Um, hello. Deku is staring at somebody. As they're... They're different. Hi. This person has four eyes. And, um, that, that animal, ah, uh, wow, okay, that's something from Earth. Hi. 
Hello, um, is my appearance disturbing to you? No, um, yes, sorry, it's just, um, that animal is terrifying on my planet. Oh, I resemble something from your planet. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm just gonna turn around. Is that rooting your species? Oh, not at all. Actually, um, I am curious about your species as well. But, um, I've been sent here to talk to you. The Council, they have much to discuss with you. And they want to know a bit more about your species and exactly if we can work something out. Now, Deku is quite surprised. And the man, he would at least go on to continue. Expressing more and more things to Deku. As we do eventually have our Deku, he and Amelia, they're given the go-ahead to go back to Earth. And Deku, he does at least have one condition for this. He takes the ship with him. Because, so far, that ship is the fastest one they do have. And if they don't use the exact ship, then their stay in space, or their trip back there, will take a lot longer than it should. Now, the people here, they are obviously a bit more concerned. However, they do at least accept Deku's proposal on this matter. And they do at least give a few things to Deku and Amelia. They give Deku, quite simply, a communicator. One that should work for very, very far ranges. And they do even give him data to give back to his people. And they do even give him a beacon. When the beacon is activated, it will give the council Deku's location and they can begin their way to Earth. Now, this is actually something that is very, very intriguing to them. And they do even give Deku data on multiple species that may come to his planet. Since, well, they are going to have to talk with this government he does have. Now, Deku and Amelia, they actually are very much intrigued by this. And whenever they do pack things up and leave, you do have Deku, who he does begin the flight back to the planet they were on. And from there, they do begin the idea or the process of backtracking. And Deku, yeah. Whenever him and Amelia are flying, it does take about, hmm, what's a good time frame that's still very fast? Let's see, they're halfway across the Milky Way galaxy. That's already pretty far. So if they don't take a wormhole, and it's still, well, that way they don't have time dilation. Hmm. Let's say about four or five days. Because even for traveling, well, halfway across the universe, that's, that's still insane. And it does at least make sure that the trade quad do have the fastest system. Or the fastest mode of travel. Now, Deku and Amelia, they do actually get back to Earth. And whenever they do enter the solar system, they are immediately hailed by something. And it does these come up on Deku's screen. And Deku, he does this go to send back a response. And we do actually have the early warning system on the outer bleh, the outer perimeter of the solar system. And right now, the person do get a response back. They hailed the nearby ship. They didn't know if it was one that just went too far, and they at least tried to ask if it needed assistance. However, Deku sent a message back requesting that they do not fire on them. And Deku didn't even send by a voice transmission. Or the person hear the voice, they were surprised. As right past their planet, whoosh, a ship they couldn't even see. Now, we do currently have back on Earth. Where people, they're being told that there's something landing there. And, well, from their trajectory that they've been able to calculate, that right now, it has slowed upon approach. Now, we do actually have outside of the Yairuzu estate, where a ship does come flying down. And whenever multiple guards do come running out to see it, they're quite shocked to see a Dratix craft. Before it does land, and out steps two different people in spacesuits. And when this does happen, we do actually have Deku. Who, he did just go to bring his hands up, and go to push the rest of the space chute off of, well, his body. Him actually going to stretch, talking about how that took a long time. Now, Amelia does come stepping out. 
And a lot of people they do actually watch her. As we do have somebody who's going to come running out of the mansion. And the moment they do see that aircraft, they're immediately surprised. Them walking forwards and going to see exactly who's there. As Deku is going to turn his head to see Alice. What is the meaning of this? Oh. Um, hi, mother. Her going to turn her head slightly. Amelia? Human. What exactly are you doing here? Okay, there is a lot to explain. Now, we all need to talk. Listen, it's going to take some time. But, wait, hang on a minute. I need to... They're going to reach into his back pocket. As he's going to pull out something strange. And the moment he's going to hold it up, he's going to press a button. And everybody they do is just going to stare at him before they do go to open fire. They thought Deku just pressed down into a detonator. And the moment this does actually happen, Deku is just going to bring his hand up. Him immediately going to block the blasters they do fire at him before his eyes do to glow and his hair starts to stand. And the moment, there's a, uh, the, the moment that actually does go to happen, you do actually have many people. They do stare at him. And they do really start to shout at him that he is possessed. And they do start to fire off more weapons at him. And we do actually have Amelia, who does go to bring her hands up and go to shout for them all to cease fire. Because they have information on ways to take down and stop the war. Now, Alice herself is going to command everybody to cease fire. Because they're currently firing on a royal. And they are currently all under the threat of execution. Now, many people immediately just go to, go to stop firing. And they do go to drop their own weapons. Now, Deku is currently holding on the blast into the air. Him actually going to turn his hand around and go to, with two fingers, flick them up into the air. The blast all going careening upwards into the sky. And we do currently have Deku. Who he is just going to bring up his hands. Okay. Listen. Nobody else try to shoot us. Alright? Is everybody cool? We're all cool, right? Explain what you are doing here. Okay. So. Long story short... We got abducted by aliens. Is that some sort of joke? Are you saying that the, what, Traqua abducted you? Why are you glowing? I'm guessing it's a side effect. No, it wasn't a Traqua. In fact, well, it was a Devrix and a Yankrill. What? Okay. You know how your planet was attacked and you had to retreat and evacuate? Yes. And, well, we've learned quite a lot of informa information since then. Okay. Alice. <sighs> you know how the Daedrix, they're planet conquerors. And they've consumed planets before? Ah, I do see. Yeah. So. You encounter a species you wish to ally us with, and you want us to fight against this threat. With what? One other species? One surviving member? Actually, that's wrong. Right now, the thing I just activated, it's sending a message to the council. And, well, it's not just one species. It's actually thousands of them. Tens of thousands, if I'm correct. Now, the queen just does go, the, the queen does just go to stare at Deku, shocked, and she's going to turn towards Amelia, asking if this man is true, and if he does speak true words. <laughs> yes, mother, he does. In fact, well, we've come with quite a bit of information to share, but where is Adam? I do not see him here. Your brother, he is, well, um, he has had to step down as ruler. I excuse me? Yes, his actions started to get quite dangerous. For mem 
many Etzos, and, well, many humans, they started to not seem as fit. So, he has been stripped of his title as king, and currently, I have been leading. But, Mother, that, that doesn't sound correct. Ultimately, the, the, the decision would go down to, yes, normally the jurisdiction would go down to members of our court that do help maintain our ruling. However, your brother, he has had half of them executed. And he's at least gained many, well, people who do not wish to see him return to the throne. Because of one simple fact. Your brother, he has been abusive with power. And he will never step up for the throne again. Now, Amelia is quite shocked. Her brother murdered their advisors? Oh. Oh, fuck. Um, that, um, that is quite bad. Her gonna bring her hand up to her chest. And Degadu's gonna turn, asking if she's okay. Uh, uh, I'll be fine. Um, uh, okay. I'll be okay. Okay. Um, listen, this isn't the best place to talk about this. Can we go somewhere with less guns and weapons and less eyes? We have many matters to discuss. Now, the queen's sister, Deku. Deku, he's still supposed to be executed. Well, the date has been moved backwards, it does appear that they may finally be able to give a date for it. However, maybe they'll have to wait just a little bit longer. Because, hey, of course they ran into an alien government out in space. Of course they did. Now, Deku and Amelia, they actually do come walking to the mansion. And many people, they are currently staring at them. And we do actually have one of her, Deku, the Queen, and Amelia... They're all sitting in a room and given privacy. And the queen, she actually does go on to berate Deku about many things. And even scold her daughter. Because there were many problems. Her brother abuses power. He was, well, off the fucking deep end. And many members of their court, they don't even currently trust the ruling queen. And, well, right now, there is the fact that with Amelia's return... That she is going to be, well, not stripped of her title as princess because that was never made official. But, the fact is, right now, she is the only heir to the throne that is fit to still rule. And that does surprise Amelia herself. She was, well, never intentioned to rule. She was never seen as the one to rule. And right now she's being told... She can still, well, have a chance for it. Now, this does shock her, and Deku would try to explain to the queen, don't throw so much at her at once right now. Hmm? Human, I have many problems with you. You convinced my daughter to run off with you, and you convinced her to give up her title. You were the main cause for her to... Well, I'll do this. And you've caused many problems for my son. If it wasn't for your... What is you... What do you humans again call it? Your act of complete idiocy, then my Adam would not have lost his mind. He would not have done what he did. Mother, it wasn't his idea. It was mine. Really? Now that is a shock. I am very disappointed in you. Now, that that matter is done, we will talk to these governments, we will help them, and, well, in that amount of time, an accident will befall your, as you put it, husband. Then, it will be all quite simple. Then you must actually find a proper Edso and create an heir. And, mother, there is already an heir. Excuse me? Mother... That's part of the information we have. I am... She's... 
Hargonet looked directly at Deku. Him saying the words out loud as the queen's face to turn, well, completely pale. And she does go to stare directly at him. As she does go to slowly turn her head back to her daughter. Is... is this... are these words true? Yes, mother. Now please, calm down. Because you are stressing all of us out. How is that possible? Th this should not be... Yeah, about that. We barely learned about it. How? When? We learned about it a few weeks ago. And, well, um, in human terms, Amelia is about... Mother, I am... Well, um, I'm going to say a number. That would actually be somewhat easy for Edsos to pronounce. And her mother is actually quite surprised. Okay. Well, um, that is quite surprising to her. Now, for frame of reference, I want to say about a month and a half. And this is still quite significant. And we do actually wonder if she's going to turn back to Deku. Asking exactly what this does all mean. Yeah, um... Well, it's... It's good. It, um... It means that your people, well, um, they can repopulate with who they please. Hmm. This is still, um, uncharted territory. Yes, but we had many alien physicians tell us that the baby will be healthy. Is this true? Yeah, um, I... Basically talk to a robot doctor. You talk to a Draytix? No, actually, he was a Devrix. And now that I say that out loud, those two are very similar. Ha. <sighs> Alright. So, mind explain to me what a Devrix is? Mother, they're the species that gave our ancestors technology. Now, Alice is clearly quite surprised by this, and even a bit more shock, as she starts to process everything, explaining to them that a quarters will be, will be prepared for them, and they will talk later. For right now, she needs to contemplate this, and at least address members of the remaining court. Now, with that being said, Deku, he does still at least find this to be quite surprising, and whenever he does get access to a computer, one that he actually can understand, he does do much with this information. The number one thing he does is upload the information about the Draytix and multiple alien species to the internet. And he even does make an announcement about his arrival back to Earth. Now, he does this by doing one small thing. He calls a TV outlet and explains to them that he is a Zuka Midoriya. And whenever he was laughed at and even called an imposter because the real Midoriya really just packed his shit and left, he did something that would be unmistakable for Izuka Midoriya. He flew the spaceship through town, and he did so by revealing his face. Now, after that was done, it was not really all that hard. People learned of his return, and they learned about... More aliens. Yay. Now, with that being said, the alien species that are on their way to Earth, they do at least have about, I want to say, two weeks before they do arrive. And with that, I do hope you guys enjoyed, and have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.